All right, now that we've created our Spring Boot application and we've started to create all the different classes that we're going to need in our application, there's kind of one more step to do, and that's we need to be able to save some data. We're going to basically set up some dummy data using a command line runner, and we're going to need to set a few properties in our application.properties file so that we can kind of jump into our H2 console and make sure everything's working all right. So we're going to do all that. Fire up the application, make sure it works, and then we should be good to go on the Spring Boot side of things. So the first thing we're going to need to do in our task service here, we need to be able to save off a new task. So we're going to have a task save task task. So that's what our method is going to look like. And what we need to do now is go over to our implementation and actually create this method. So we're going to go implement method task. So we know that that's going to return a type task. So to do that, what we want to do is use our repository, so task repository, and we're going to save that task. So that should return us that actual task. So that's going to be a, give us the functionality that we need in our Spring Boot app here to create some dummy data, if you will. So there's probably one more thing, and we might as well go ahead and do this now, but later when we get into wanting to save a task from the Angular side, we're going to need another method. So we'll need a post. So this takes, we'll call this slash save. And again, we have a request mapping of slash API slash tasks. So the full URL to this would be slash API slash tasks slash save. So that's our post mapping. This is going to be a public method that is going to return a task. And we'll call this save task. And this is actually going to take a request body. So this is basically what we're posting from Angular to the Spring application here. And that's going to be of type task, and we'll call that task. And basically, that's going to use this new method that we just created in our task service called save. And that's going to take task. So we'll get into that later, but I figured since we were here, we might as well go ahead and create that now. So now we have everything that we should need to go ahead and create some dummy data. So let's go ahead and do that now. So what I'm going to do is actually use a command line runner. So we will use command line runner. No, nope. let's fix that. Command line runner, we'll call this runner. It is going to take our task service. It needs it to save them off. And that looks about right. Now, I'm going to cheat here and copy this data. I don't think you want to watch me sit here and type all this out. So yes, yes. And all we're doing here is creating a bunch of new tasks. So these are all the tasks that you saw in the demo from the first lesson in this section. So these are all the tasks. And now when we fire this up, we should have all these available. So let's go ahead and save that. And let's go ahead and run the tasks application. And hopefully this all works and we can go ahead and see all of our data. And we'll actually do it two different ways. We'll run in and jump in. Oh, nope, I did forget something here. Let's stop this. So I forgot that we need to set up some properties here because we want to be able to jump into the H2 console. So there's a couple different things. I actually manage, meant, I want to actually turn this off for development. I like to be able to see the different endpoints in the actuator. We won't really use it in this particular lesson, but you may use it. So I also want to set up a data source name. And so we'll call this tasks. I'm going to oops, bring dot jpa dot show SQL. I just like to turn that on in development as well. And so then finally, we have some H2 settings. And we'll do a couple here. So h2.council, the path. Just so you know, the default is h2.council. I just wanted to show you that. We also want to enable this. And by default, it is not enabled. 
So now with all of that, I think I can go ahead and rerun my application. And what we're gonna do is we'll jump into the H2 database console, make sure that our data is there, and then we can also visit the particular URL that is in our task controller to get the uh, a list of tasks. So let's go ahead, oh, parameter zero could not be found, all right. So again, I'm building this right here with you. Okay, so why couldn't task service be found? Let's go ahead and look at our task service. Okay, well, first of all, we need to mark this with at service or that's not gonna get wired in. That should take care of our issue. Let's go ahead and rerun it. And hopefully this time we'll start up and we'll be able to jump into the H2 console. All right, so far so good. Looks like we're gonna be good this time. So start it up, export complete. That just means we went ahead and added our data. So let's jump into localhost 8080. Nope. Oh, we did have an issue. Um, what was our issue here? So, Command line runner, we're adding our new tasks. No default constructor for entity com dot the real dambega task. So no default constructor. Let's go ahead and create one. All right, now I think we're good. Let's go ahead and run this. And all right, that's good. Now let's go ahead and visit the H2 console. And a name of our data source is actually tasks. So I'm gonna use tasks, connect to that. And we do see our task database here with our task table. So I'm gonna select star from task, run that. And good, there is all of our information. Something a little funky going on with the due date there. We'll come back to that. So local host, and now if we want to, we should be able to go to API tasks, and what was it, just slash, that should list them out. So that's going to give us all of our data. And it looks like we are good to go. So I think we're gonna end it there. That is the Spring Boot side of things, again, we. We started off by just creating a, a, a simple uh, Spring Boot application with a number of dependencies. We kind of built out our application where we had, you know, our controller package, and then we call our service, and the service calls a repository for persistence. And we just added some dummy data in this lesson using our command line runner in our main application. So that's the Spring Boot side of things. Again, you guys have all probably created something very similar to this. But now what we're gonna do in the next lesson is actually start to build on this and start building our Angular application. And we're gonna do that right inside of this application in the next lesson.